And good evening, everyone. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, October 12, 2021. Uh, same version and or, as they said in the movie Ghost, second verse, same as the first. It just really appeared to be on a lesser scale, but the same type of a move. Um, <clears throat> we did continue lower into Globex, but Globex made uh, its low early in their session and then just rallied it up for the balance of until we came online again this morning. And I just continue to feel very strongly that we're, we're getting set up here for a heavier decline. And however they're doing it, that's up to them. But I'm able to put it together in an Elliott fashion. And again, I've gone back and I'm reading the original work, um, the original introduction, his origi original thesis, and why he felt the way he did and how they were measurable. So what we're doing today, it's, you know, he's giving his thoughts on why it's valid. And then it remains valid. And it does remain valid. So Elliott Wave remains valid, but we get into sometimes a position. And even though this is an hourly chart, it's still, I need to account for and put into a larger count of what I believe is happening. And since I believe we're in a larger impulse wave down, I am counting five waves down. And we're still in that, the structure wise is now falling more into line with that. I still, this very beginning was a little bit crazy, but it, I can work it and still fit it and allow for the slight nuances to get it to fill what I am looking for in the bigger picture. So I continue, you, uh, this count is fluid. So this one was up higher, but I've moved it down and I continue to move down the one, two, one, two count for several reasons. If I don't, this thing is going to subdivide so many times that we'll never be done with it. So at some point, I've got to step back, look at what we've done and say, okay, that's got to be the minute wave one, not you know, a minute wave one, the minute two, and sub-minute and sub-minute, and then sub-sub. That's way too much. So you've got to fill in that blank uh, with a much, a little bit higher degree. So in other words, moving the minute down makes a lot more sense than subdividing, subdividing, and just continuing to subdivide uh, because you'll lose count. So that's what I've done. And here sits my minute one and minute two. They fit, the two fits more cleanly because it was pretty sizable. The rejection is the start of that three of three of three move. So what I believe we completed at the Globex low is the sub minute wave one. And then we had a rally up to the high uh, of both sessions, um, sub minute wave two. So here we are again on the abyss, on the precipice, looking over really thinking, well, this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be jumping off this cliff and it, there isn't anything down there. So it's, it's do or die. Again, in terms of a larger third wave being in force and seeing uh, a little bit steadier or more intense uh, acceleration. So selling acceleration, because that's the direction. The direction is down. So I'm looking for the sellers to step up to the plate in larger numbers, which is going to push <clears throat> the buying right out. So because each one of these is just in a different reason and some other fund or something that's moving money into the market against seeing everything that we had done with moving money, moving money out of the market. So today was the same, but 
of a lesser scale than what we have previously seen. So either it's, you know, it, it's do a coin toss. It was again, basically the same stocks with it, but a little bit different here and there and you know, different reasons, et cetera, et cetera. Nonetheless, money is being shifted around. And once it's appearing to be done, each time, let me open this up, it's rejected. And then funds need to put money in the market, put it in the market, fine, thank you very much, reject it. Then reject it again. Here we go again. This basically was the Russell. And then the throwover stocks that sit between the Russell and the NASDAQ and the Russell and the broader markets. And here it was, just buying it straight up. Reject it, bought it up again. Reject it, bought it up again. Reject it and reject it and reject it. So I feel that eventually, you know, the buyers would be like, well, I guess we'll wait or they're done. And the sellers will resume again, because of a lot of things are aligning on that side and not sure what they're waiting for, what other additional information is going to be needed uh, to kind of bring it in. But of course, the real big one that everyone now is waiting on, which begins on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, the 14th which, with Alcoa, um, but earnings. So I think we're gonna get some disappointments, but then that could be the thing. The, the expectation is sell a rumor or sell an emotion, and then the reality would be the actual earnings coming out and they're not bad that they're showing that these companies are, are trim and strong and whatever, but they're making money. Um, and that could be the case too, in which case then we're gonna fly up in a B wave because outside of all that, once we factor in the last quarter, which is history, all of these companies have to forward guidance that's saying we intend to do the same thing for the balance of the year and end up with a strong year. And if that's gobbled up and the market believes it, well, then we're going to end up much higher. And it, it'll, it'll all work out because essentially, as I've discussed previously, and, and I'll just go out there just in case this is what's brewing, we're going to start talking about it now. I go out to the four hour and just kind of open that up. It is truly just. Um, Delaying the inevitable. Um, that's not gonna work. The all-time high beyond that. So I'm letting go. I think we can use really use the daily. It just gets a little bit uh, wrong in terms of. But I can try to get it into my picture. But basically what I'm looking at is from the all-time high, this could be A, this could be B, and this could be a C. And if that's the case, then this is a wave A, and then we're in the, into a wave B. And into that, we have A, B, C. That, that I'm very satisfied with, but that could just be wave A. And now we're actually doing an A, B, C down, which this many times over could fit. That could be A, this could be B. And now we're just going to do a little C wave and finish that C wave down and then turn higher again in a larger C wave. And that C wave would have the potential to go to a new all time high and still be corrected. So we've seen it before and we could see it again. And what would be coming on the other side of it, that would be devastating. So no matter what happens right now, we're just building to that ultimate, ultimate, true, strong, very strong drop. And that is what I continue to see. Now, whether it's going to happen now, I'm, that's why I'm injecting a lot of, well, this is what we really should be seeing. If not, it's just being delayed. The inevitable will, will just be out there waiting. And 
we're going to run the market up and they're going to run the market up to new all-time highs. That is a possibility. But right now, this is account for going in the opposite direction and building on uh, that this is, this is going to be an, a five wave decline to announce wave A of that larger correction. Instead of it being three and that wave A is being announced here. If that's again, if that's the case, I, we will have to lay ground that it'll include new all time highs and it will be corrective. But we need to bear all of that in mind. It'll be based purely on BS. It'll be based on a hope of women of prayer. It'll be based on, oh, this is solid. We're, we're back on solid ground. All kinds of things. Because a lot of people have to be fooled to jump back in. And some of them already are. Okay. So, but leaving the count as is, leaving this one, two, one, two. Here's what should happen with this count. We should not be fooling around. We, we started to come off and they hit the market and they hit the market. So again, on an hourly chart, it, it, looked, it looked good coming off. And so I would suspect we, we definitely got to come down and break below uh, 4,300 on this move with ease and just keep going for a while with ease. And that's just when exhausted, the sellers are, are exhausted with, from the Asian market, and then it'll roll to Europe. And everyone should be picking up on this. To have one, just start to buy it. Actually, the, it would upset the apple cart, so to speak, because we're looking for something much stronger. All right, so uh, can, this was actually a good trading day. So, I don't want to be disillusioned by saying that you can't trade this and you can't make money. You can make damn good money. So what I'm laying out is a larger picture. And if we're day trading, the directional trades that I think will make more money are going to be down. But in this case today, recognizing that they were buying it was also a good thing. It was not difficult just to buy it and let it go and buy it and let it go, even if you just participated a little in each bar. That still made you good money, as did the sell sides. But the sell sides took a while. And well, this was overnight. And the sell side started basically from our opening, but we had a decent buy bar here. And it was, and it was anticipated. And again, ran up touched this pre-session high and then nosedive. So there were several opportunities to do some good trading today. And this is the hourly chart. Um, and I do think that we'll have the same case tomorrow. So downside picture does include, um, again, just open this up so we can look at these. Fibonacci's and I should have looked at the other way. Again, a third wave within the third, it should easily start to break below at least 4260 down to 4209, 4210. Maybe do a little bit stronger pause here, completing this third, then a four and a five to complete this third, and then a four and a five to complete this third. And then another four and a five to complete this third all the way up here. So then we have completed that intermediate five all the way down, or the third all the way down. And that's what I'm looking for. I'll break below 4,000 before all is said and done. Um, and now we have both sides of that picture. Did the market not agree? And we come down, we put in a new low, and that's enough. And they turn this thing and they start to run it. A new low below 4,315. And then that's it. And they start to run it up higher. Then I'm going to consider this to be likely complete as a B wave. And then we begin a C wave up. And that C wave could be uh, fairly, fairly strong. 
if it is what's happening. Okay, this is where I'm gonna leave it. This is long enough. Next update tomorrow.